Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today we're going to be talking about work and how we can use calculus and integrals in particular to help us solve different work problems. So in physics, work is defined as force times distance. So in the metric system, the units for work are going to be joules, which are equal to newton meters, so newton for force, meters for distance. In the imperial system, it's going to be uh, uh, pound feet, which is an awful unit, and I feel sorry for you if you ever have a problem where you have to do stuff with imperial units, because they are awful and we should all be using the metric system. So congratulations to everyone who is not in America, or two other tiny countries that I forget about, because you all get the nice units. Um, so if we have a constant force applied over the distance, then work is going to be very straightforward to calculate. It's just going to be whatever the force is times the distance. So if we exert 3 newtons to move an object 5 meters, then we exerted 15 joules of work to move it. However, the force exerted to move an object doesn't have to always be constant. For example, maybe you are pushing something, and as you're pushing it, it gets easier and easier to push, so you have to exert less force. So an example of this might be with friction. It takes a lot more force to get something to start moving than it does to just keep pushing something to continue moving. It's the static friction versus kinetic friction. So that might be one example where we might have it. Or maybe um, the actual force changes. Maybe as something moves away from the planet, gravitational force is decreasing. So maybe we would need to do something with that there. So there's situations where force is going to be different depending on position, and so the force is not always a constant which is why we might need integrals to calculate the work done. So let's suppose that we are trying to lift a bucket of water out of a well that is 10 meters deep. So the weight, and weight is a force because weight is mass times gravitational acceleration, so mass times acceleration is a unit of force. So the weight of the bucket is 20 newtons, and then the rope connecting the bucket weighs 1 newton per meter. So what's going to be the total work done in pulling up the bucket? So here's a little diagram. We have our 20 newton bucket at the bottom connected to 10 meters of rope, which is one newton for every meter. So what's going to be the work done in pulling up that bucket? Well, as we are pull on the rope, we are lifting less and less uh, stuff as time goes on. So for every meter we've pulled it up, we have one less newton we have to be lifting. And so that's going to give us a changing force function. So we are going to have to figure out what the force is depending on how far we've lifted it already. So let's start by figuring out the force equation and then we can deal with the distance part in a sec. So let's let f of x be the force when the bucket is at height x and we are going to say that x equals 0 is when the bucket is at the top of the well and then x increases it goes down the well so that at x equals 10 it is at the very bottom of the well. So since the bucket is a constant 20 newtons, no matter what the height is, and because the weight of the rope is 1 newton per meter, if there's x meters left of rope, then the force equation is just going to be 20 plus x. We have the 20 newtons from the bucket plus x meters of rope that is also having to be lifted. So now that we know the force at any given x is 20 plus x, we now need to figure out the distance that that force will be able to be moved before the force changes. Now, if we have moved it any distance at all, that's going to decrease the force a little bit as well. So that means that we can't move it very much at all. In fact, we can only move it at an infinitesimally small distance before the force function would change. So because the force changes as soon as we've moved the bucket, we are going to call the distance that we're able to move it dx, representing an infinitesimally small distance in the x direction. So that means that the work to move the bucket a tiny amount when it's at height x is 20 plus x all times dx. So to figure out the total work, we're going to add up all of these tiny amounts of work, uh, basically in a series, which we can actually compute using an integral. So the total work is going to be the integral from 0 to 10 of 20 plus x times dx. So the 20 plus x, that's our force, the dx is our distance, and then 0 to 10 is saying what values of x are we going to be including. So we, the bucket has to pass between every value between 0 and 10, so that is why it's going to be the integral from 0 to 10. 
So if we compute this, this becomes 20x plus x squared over 2, evaluated between 0 and 10, which is going to go out to 250 joules. Another problem that is a slightly different setup, but is a similar process in logic to figure out the different pieces, is going to be if we are pumping water out of a tank. So let's suppose that we are pumping water out of a conical tank where the base of the tank has radius 3 meters and the height of the cone is 4 meters. And then the output valve, so where we are pumping the water to, is 7 meters above the top of the tank. How much work would it be to pump out all of the water that's in the tank? So we are going to assume that 1 liter of water is 10 newtons. It's not a perfect approximation, but it's, it's about 9.8 newtons, so 10 newtons is going to just make the problem a little bit easier to compute for the example. So for this example, we will say that one liter of water weighs 10 newtons. So the first thing I would always recommend doing is draw a picture and then label the different distances and things that we know. So we know we have a cone and then the top of the tank is 7 meters up, uh, the height is 4 meters, and then the radius at the bottom of the tank is 3 meters. How much work is it to pump out all of the water in this tank? So to start off, we need to figure out what we want our variable to measure. So because we are going to be dealing with a cone, we're probably going to need radius at different heights. So to make the calculating the radius as easy as possible, let's set x equals 0 to be the top of the cone and x equals 4 the bottom of the cone. This is going to make our integral as easy as it possibly could be. However, if we had chosen different values for where x would, like where is x equal to 0, where is x equal to 4, and so on, those would give us different looking integrals, but the value of the integral would be the same. So pick a convention for where you're going to assign x to be, and then stick with that throughout the rest of the problem. So to figure out how we would approach setting up this problem, let's think about how water behaves as we pump it out. So as we're pumping water out, the water level in the tank is going to lower uniformly throughout the tank. So if I pump a little bit of water out from the left side of the tank, the right side is also going to go down by the exact same amount the right side went down. So that means as we are pumping it out, it's moving down as an entire surface. So we can think of the water as very thin so if we were to slice the cone up into thin slices, where the th thickness of the slice is going to just be dx, so infinitely small uh, slices, that means the volume of each slice, because they're all cylinders, is going to be pi r squared dx. So that means we need to figure out what the radius of the cone is depth x. And this is why we chose x to be 0 at the top of the cone, because the radius function is going to be nice. So because this is going to form a bunch of similar triangles, where we're trying to figure out what's the radius when the height is x, we would then be able to find that the radius is going to be 3 fourths x. So that means that the volume of one slice is pi times 3 fourths x all squared times dx. So that means the force is going to be 10 times the volume. So the force acting on one slice is 10 pi times 3 fourths x squared dx. So now what we have to do is we have to figure out how far do we have to move each slice. So if we're pumping a slice out that is x meters below the top of the cone, we first have to pump x meters to the top of the cone and then 7 more meters to get outside the tank. So that means that we are going to have to pump it 7 plus x meters. 7 meters for the top uh, pipe and then x meters from inside the cone. Since the force acting on a slice is 10 pi times 3 fourths x squared dx, and the distance is 7 plus x, we multiply those two together and put that into an integral. So it'll be the integral from 0 to 4, because our x values will range between 0 and 4. So integral from 0 to 4 of 10 pi times 3 fourths x all squared times 7 plus x dx. So if we were to go through and calculate what this integral would be, we would be able to pull the 10 pi out and distribute a little bit of stuff in the multiplication. So we'd get 10 pi times the integral from 0 to 4 of 9 sixteenths times 7x squared plus x cubed. So that becomes 45 pi over 8 
times the integral from 0 to 4 of 7x squared plus x cubed. So that becomes 45 pi over 8 times 7 thirds x cubed plus 1 fourth x to the fourth evaluated from 0 to 4. So that becomes 45 pi over 8 times 7 thirds times 64 plus 64. So this becomes 45 pi over 8 times 10 thirds times 64, which is 15 times 80 pi, which is 1200 pi. So that means it is going to take 1200 pi it's going to take 1200 pi joules of work to pump out all of the water. I hope this video was helpful and that you were able to enjoy it and learn a little bit more. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and please check out some of my other videos. Have a great day and good luck with the rest of your math!